Greetings. We're going to use ArcGIS to make a spatial decision. In this case, we're going to figure out where the ideal site would be to site a wildfire observation tower in the wonderful and fabulous Loose Hills near Blair, Nebraska. Now, as you can see in this photograph of myself on the fabulous Los Hills, this is the largest expanse of windblown silt following continent, continental glaciation in North America. Much of the terrain, as you can see here, is covered with medium-length prairie grass. What we're going to do with our GIS is we're going to address where to site these wildfire observation towers. Now, wildfires are a huge global issue, right? Not just in the United States, but globally. Australia and other places have had enormous wildfires over the last decade. And in this case, we're going to use the 7.5 minute by 7.5 minute topographic map cell that corresponds to a USGS 1 to 24,000 scale quadrangle. And what we've done is we've downloaded digital line graph data, digital elevation data, and also national land cover data in order to make this decision. What we will need to do now is, as you can see here, we're going to use the, the following criteria to site our wildfire observation towers. They have to be within 100 meters of a roadway for easy access. They have to be within 200 meters of a river for access to water. They have to be at least 380 meters in elevation for the best visibility of the surrounding terrain on a slope of less than 5 degrees to minimize construction costs and to maximize ground stability. And they also have to be on pasture or hay fields, since these are the grassy areas most susceptible to wildfires in this area. So those are our criteria. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to buffer the streams or the hydro features. So as you can see here in our last video, I actually selected out the true hydro features. These, these rectangle around the hydro features are neat lines. They are not hydro features even though they're in the hydro features data set. So now that we've actually selected our true hydro features, it's simply a matter of going to the search and look for buffer and pull up the buffer tool. The buffer tool allows us to buffer or create polygons around features, okay, corresponding to certain criteria. Now I mentioned that our criteria was 200 meters, correct? So our input features here is our hydro features, okay? And our output is going to be in my folder that I designated with the geoprocessing environments command. I've said I want all my data sets to go into this folder. That way I'm not you know, putting data all over my computer. So make life easier for yourself and use that environments uh, variable uh, or that dialog box in the uh, geoprocessing. Let me show you where that is just briefly. It is under under geoprocessing environments and it's under workspace. So see I've got the workspace set to where I want the data sets to go. Okay great. So I've already set that. Now I'm going to go ahead and call up the buffer tool again. Okay there's my buffer tool and I'm going to buffer the hydro and I'm going to put the output in hydro 200 meters and I'm going to put it into a shape file. I'm not going to put it into a feature class in a geo database. Right now I'm just interested in putting it in a shape file and my buffer distance is 200 meters. And I've got some options here on the, the, the ends uh, that I can use for the uh, buffer but I'm interested in taking the defaults there and so I'm going to go ahead and say OK and it's going to buffer. Remember that you can, in terms of geoprocessing, look at the results. So here's the results in our current session, and here's the buffer that we just ran. You can see the inputs and so on. So that's kind of a handy thing to look at the results. Uh, not, not just if you have an error message come up, but regularly. Check your results. Make sure you're getting what you think you're getting. So there's my buffer for the hydro layer. Notice that the neat line, the outer perimeter, is not included because I selected those out before I ran the buffer tool. Let's just go ahead and look at uh, something here. Right now I'm going to take a, a measurement and I'm going to measure a distance in meters. That's great because what I want to do is, is check and see. This is 200 meters on each side of the buffer, right? They're not 200 meters total, so that or they're actually 400 meters wide. So that's the buffer that I ran on my hydro features. It's as simple as running the buffer command. Thanks.